This podcast deals with issues about LGBT families and trans-specific topics. We would love to hear from you and welcome your questions and comments. However, we will not tolerate any discriminatory language or hate speech. So please, just don't do it. Enjoy the show! You know, caveat, you know, because we're talking about all these, like, potential side effects and, like, kind of scary shit about HRT is, I mean, it's, it's something to definitely be aware of, but not, like, terrified of. I mean, I had somebody comment when I posted my video about um, being in the hospital that, you know, well, this is one of the reasons I'm scared about, you know, starting HRT. And I'm like, listen, it's talk to your doctor, be on the same page about it, understand what potential complications to be aware of, but it's not something to be scared of. When we were kids, we met at camp. After college, we got married. Ten years later, we finally had a baby. That same year, I came out as trans. This is the story of our journey. Through marriage. Parenting. Gender. And all the changes that life brings. This is Our Our Life Life in in Transition. Transition. I don't know what I'm doing this time. I'm just rambling on. I just start talking and hopefully it comes together in the edit. Hmm. Anyway. Hi everybody. Hello. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in again. I am Shannon. And I am Rachel. And this is another delightful episode of Our Life in Transition. It is. Mm -hmm. So, I was asking you how you're feeling. How are you feeling? Well, that sounds great. <laughs> um, miserable. Would you like to elaborate? My shoulder hurts. I'm sorry. Mm. Life with EDS. So, for those of you who uh, are not aware, which is probably most everybody in the world, because you haven't really talked about it to um, anybody, um, your shoulder's been kind of screwy lately. Mm-hmm. And you went for at least two weeks. And uh, you thought it might be like a... Your rotator cuff was messed up or something, but it's just... Life with EDS. Yep. Um, Joint instability. Frequent dislocation. My shoulder's just kind of floating around doing its own thing. I'm sorry. So. And there's nothing they can do. Which is story of my life. Which is why I don't usually go to doctors, but... Shannon and my mother and my sister and my coworkers and everybody else under the sun have been nagging me to get it looked at. So I went. And now everybody can shut up. Well, I mean, at least you have an answer now. But I'm sorry. The answer is suck it up. Oh. So today's episode is going to be about health. Yay. Health. Health. So, I mean, I, uh... I thought I was having a heart attack a couple weeks ago. That was fun. No, it wasn't. <laughs> um, I did a whole um, episode of my YouTube uh, on my YouTube channel about this, so you can go there for more details. But um, long story short, um, I decided to try to exercise because I've <laughs> been being healthy, and uh, I wound up uh, giving myself some severe, severe muscle strain and. Uh, uh, a crazy asthma attack, which was so bad I didn't recognize it as an asthma attack. And uh, yeah, I thought I was having a heart attack. It was really bad. I went up in the ER, but I'm okay. Um, but part of the reason I went up in the ER was because, um, well, first of all, Rachel took me to urgent care, um, which to just get checked out, but um, they. You know, they did an EKG and they're like, it's not your heart. Uh, but you're on HRT, so we can't rule out that it's not a, a pulmonary embolism because HRT causes blood clots sometimes, maybe. 
And that's something we have to be aware of. So, um, I mean, at this point, I, I've been on HRT for uh, a year and a half. I just hit my year and a half a week and a half ago, which was nice. Yay! Hooray, me! I don't um, have any confetti, so. That's okay. I've got popcorn. Um, you want me to throw the popcorn? Please don't throw my popcorn. Okay. But, I mean, those are the kind of things that, um, unfortunately, um, you have to be aware of when you are um, taking, you know, when you're on hormone replacement therapy is there can, I mean, it's literally changing your hormonal balance and there are potential side effects and consequences. Um, one of them being blood clots. Um, it can affect your heart, um, which is not great, but it's also not, you know, it's rare um, for it to really be a problem. Um, but those are the kind of things that you have to be aware of. I mean, to be perfectly honest, this whole weight loss journey that I've been on, I mean, part of that is also because, you know, changing my hormones actually made it uh, easier for me to gain weight and not um, lose. So, I mean, there's lots of things that um, you kind of have to think about um, and be aware of when you're when you're on HRT. And I, it, it, it sucked in, in that one of the first things that went through my head when I was feeling the way I was feeling and thinking, well, okay, well, what's possibly going on was that I'm like, oh, fuck, did I do this to myself? Taking my medication because I'm trans and like, am I having a heart attack because I'm on these hormones because I'm, you know, trying to be <laughs> who I actually am. And, um, and I, I was having a lot of feelings of like, you know, I just can't win, but I'm okay. It wasn't that, it wasn't a pulmonary embolism. No, so. it was not. Nope. I am just weak. <laughs> Which also is actually part, probably part of the, the hormones, because like, I, I can't lift things like I used to. You say hormones, Benny. I know. My mom used to make fun of me for that. I used to say horror hormones. Mm. They're terrifying. They still are. <laughs> Well, and the other thing with HRT is now you get to have a mammogram. So there's That's true. that. That's fun. Yeah. Um, actually, I just had one of my friends posted about that. Cause she just got one yesterday. I agree, dog. Um, yeah. But so, I mean, I have to um, worry about that, too, because, you know, I have the boobs now. So I could potentially, you know, I'm at a higher risk of getting breast cancer um, than I was before. And I mean, on and top I of I think th estrogen also boosts your. Mm -hmm. I mean, on on top of that, I mean, I also still, uh, I still, ha I'm gonna have to get prostate exams, which is fun. Best of both best both worlds. worlds for me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, and and one of the things too when we were in the ER is I hadn't been to that hospital in a while, and so they still had my old information, and um, the kid at the front desk updated my name but didn't update my gender marker right away which I mean sucked you know for the dysphoric reasons but also I, we were like oh, did you need to fix that because the insurance company might be like ah who the hell is this because we insure a girl and I don't, we don't know who uh, who this person is with with an M next to their name which leads you to a whole nother discussion yeah I mean because health insurance sucks I mean before before we even get into health insurance, I just want to, you know, caveat, you know, because we're talking about all these, like, potential side effects and, like, kind of scary shit about HRT, is, I mean, it's, it's something to definitely be aware of, but not, like, terrified of. I mean, I had somebody comment when I posted my video about um, being in the hospital that, you know, well, this is one of the reasons I'm scared about, you know, starting HRT, and I'm like, listen, it's, talk to your doctor be on the same page about it understand what potential complications to be aware of but it's not something to be scared of right it's like every other medication you know there mm -hmm. are side effects there are you know things that affect people differently yeah you know your it's a medication right so i mean your mileage may vary but 
you know, it's generally speaking, you're going to be okay. It's, it's a normal everyday type of medication. Um, but you know, but going back to insurance, like, you know, because they're, they're loving and caring and insurance companies are the devil. No, what do you mean? They want to take care of you and make sure that you have all the health care you could possibly ever need. Yeah, Balls. no, they, they, they will try to screw you over however they can. Um, and, I mean, right now, I'm also, you know, I started the whole weight loss journey, you know, last spring because I went for a consult for SRS and um, I was all ready to get bottom surgery and they told me I need to lose a fair amount of weight. Um, but, um, you know, it, over time I kind of became uncomfortable with the people I was working with. But part of the reason I was like, I got to work with these guys is because they're literally like the only place that I could go with my insurance. Right. Which is just, you know, there's, there's not that many options in New Jersey to begin with and they won't cover anything out of state. Right. So your option is to get surgery with people that you're not comfortable with mm -hmm. or not get surgery. Uh, yeah. I mean, right that's, now. That's I mean, the long and short of it. You know, I mean, you should always be comfortable, like, with a, you know, it's not as if they were removing a mold. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. No. It's a big <laughs> surgery. You need to be comfortable with the people that are your providers. Like, it's a big life changing surgery. That's what I'm calling it from now on. It's my mole. Whatever. <laughs> I have a mole? <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is terrible news. <laughs> anyway. Um, but, I mean, there's... I mean, at least they cover that. Um, thanks, Obama. And I mean that sincerely, because uh, before um, the Affordable Care Act, like, <laughs> yeah, insurance companies were like, oh, you're trans, that sucks for you, go fuck yourself. Um, but now, you know, in the least, they have to cover bottom surgery. Um... Sometimes they cover top surgery, but, like, there's a lot of things they don't cover. Like, right. Because um, a lot of stuff is still considered cosmetic, even yeah. though it's really not cosmetic for a trans person. No. Um, a lot Some of... of these are, like, really, like, life-changing, mm -hmm. life... Affirming. Saving. Yes. Yes. Life-saving. Because, I mean, gender dysphoria is not a joke. No. And... And, and it fucks with people. Badly. And, I mean, there's a multitude of reasons why the, the suicide rate um, in our community is so high, but uh, that's part of it. Um, but usually they don't cover um, FFS, facial feminization surgery. Um, they don't cover hair removal, which is just bullshit. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, and that's like the number one thing. You know, and you need to do hair removal for surgery. Yeah, too. Which is just that 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 was just like delightful. It's like okay, so I went to do the consult because of you know about doing bottom surgery, and they're like, okay, you need to have electrolysis or laser hair removal. Okay, fine. Yeah, but you got to pay for that out of pocket because nobody's gonna cover that, which makes no sense. Right. Cause it's if a it's prerequisite. Part, if it's if yeah. it's part of the surgery. But no, it's cos know. it's cosmetic. Because, I mean, you have to have electrolysis, and in some cases, you also have to have, like, an EKG and a checkup with a, mm -hmm. you know, cardiologist to make sure you can undergo surgery and, like, all this other, like, that's a, 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 a prep step. Yeah. That's surgical prep. And if you don't get hair removal, especially down there, I mean, you can have medical complications later. Um, I mean, I get them not wanting to cover hair removal elsewhere, like on your face, things like that. I think it's stupid. I think it really go flies in the face of why other trans care is covered to begin with. Right. But... Well, it just, I, it shows that they're doing the minimum that they can yeah, possibly absolutely. do. Um, and you know, and here's the thing. I don't understand how this is a thing, especially with the Affordable Care Act. Some places, like... <clears throat> Trans care is still, like, completely excluded. My one friend who lives in South Carolina, like, the only place you can go is 
is Planned Parenthood to get her hormones because they won't cover them. Well, is that all of South Carolina, or is that... She's a teacher, right? Yeah. So is that the school's uh, policy that doesn't that excludes it? I don't know, but my understanding is her insurance that she has, which, which I assume, is probably which for, I assume through is through the school. the school, doesn't cover it. It's it's trans care is one hundred percent explicitly excluded in her health care policy, which which makes pro- no sense. But which private I- employers can do? Yeah. Um, marketplace plans can exclude it. But if you get it through an employer, the employer can choose whether you can have any kind of coverage at all. They can exclude bariatric surgeries. They can exclude um, any elective surgery. They can exclude trans care. They can exclude um, birth control. Reproductive care. Yeah. Like, because, sure, why not? Which, in this instance, too, she works for public school, so that's just extra special that, you know, if that is the case, they're just like, oh, well, you know what? It's South Carolina. I know it's South Carolina. Well, she's moving. Um, well, then she'll yeah. be able to go somewhere other than Planned Parenthood if she wants to. Yeah, but, I mean, it's... And it's not just something with trans care. They do that all the time mm. with lots of different things that, I mean, I when my mom had cancer there was she had oh to fight tooth God. and nail just get to get pet to get pet scans cuz she had cancer and they're like oh do another like do another x-ray do another cat scan like that doesn't detect what the hell they're looking for what are you talking about and, and, and you, people shouldn't have to go through hoops to get the medical care that they need right now i'm supposed to go to physical therapy for my shoulder uh-huh i just went through physical therapy for my back I'm supposed to go for my shoulder now um, because basically the only thing that they can do for people with EDS is hope to somehow strengthen the connective tissue that's falling apart around my joints um, continually. So this is going to be an ongoing cycle of physical therapy, which is fine. I don't have a problem going to physical therapy. Except that physical therapy three times a week with my insurance costs me a an hour out of my work day because that's when I can go. It's in the middle of my work day. Because that's when they're open. Because that's when they're open. And B, $40 per visit for my copay. Mm-hmm. On top of which... I then get charged a co-insurance fee. So I ended up going for my back. I didn't go for the whole time that they wanted me to go. But I ended up basically spending $180 a week. I don't have $180 a week. And so now they're saying, well, they can't do anything about my shoulder except physical therapy. And I'm like, well, how bad do I want my shoulder fixed? Well, yeah. Because how am I going to come up with $200 a week to just exercise my shoulder? And isn't there also like a limit of how long you can go? 30 visits. Yeah. Which is nothing. I've used up half of them. Yeah. Which is nothing. So, you know, if they're only going to cover it part of the time, like that that completely negates the point of going to physical therapy. But it's not... I mean, it's covered, but it's not really covered. Right. It's kind of covered. Yeah, it's it's covered in name only. Um. Thanks again for listening to the show. If you like what you hear so far, subscribe so you never miss an episode. Also, be sure to share with your friends and family so they can enjoy as well. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. And it's, it's just, it's frustrating that we live in a system that is designed in order to maximize the profits of these private companies. Mm-hmm. 
at the expense of people's health and well-being. I will say we're grateful to even have insurance coverage because yeah. I have a pre-existing condition. Mm-hmm. Shannon has pre-existing conditions. Several. <laughs> you know, like, so we could just not be covered at all. So yeah. there's that. But they shouldn't be able to do that either. So. so. It sucks. The long and short of it is health insurance sucks private health insurance sucks so yes so during this uh delightful election cycle when people are saying oh well a a public option would be terrible because you'll lose your private health insurance please fucking take it away i don't want it i would like to have health insurance that would cover you know uh my actual health yeah, well, and but here's the other thing about health insurance. Health insurance, it's not health insurance. I think I'm probably quoting Elizabeth Warren. It's not meant to endorse Elizabeth Warren, although. Um, but it's not health insurance. It's sickness insurance. Because they don't cover a lot of things that would actually make you healthier. Uh Uh-huh. That would actually help you maintain your health Mm -hmm. so that you don't get sick and need, you know, major care. They only cover the once the shit has hit the fan. Basically. And then once the shit has hit the fan, then they go, well, geez, you should have taken care of this before. Now we've got to, you know, now we've got to pay out some money or something. I know. If only you had thought ahead. Yeah, right? So, I mean, okay. I was going to say not to get political, but we do that a lot. Well. (laughs) Where does that kind of leave us? Uh, I mean, I mean, the current situation that we are in is that there's, um, we live with this janky half-assed insurance system. Um, and... I mean, what can you do in order to, to fix that system? Um, besides vote. 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 Um, <clears throat> I, think, I think we should just, we're just going to shove that into every episode of the podcast, whether it's germane to what we're talking about or not. <laughs> until. Yes. Yes. Um, until, but, not until, until forever. 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 Because even if there's not a major election, there's a local election, mm-hmm. there's a, every, there's elections all the damn time. Vote. Vote. Um, you know, so one of the things to keep in mind, too, as far as, um, especially, you know, we're talking about trans care and LGBT care, and actually, honestly, just um, not allowing sex discrimination in general. Um, okay, it's about any... any um, non-white male care yeah that so non-white male christian care yeah um so there's this case coming up um on october 8th uh to the supreme court um that is Is being argued on the 8th or is it being ruled upon it's being argued on the 8th probably won't have a ruling until like next june or something because it takes them forever to actually think hang in there uh, rbg um oh god please um <laughs> knock on wood um but so the case that's being brought before the supreme court is actually um the first case that a explicitly is about um trans discrimination um but it's actually a a, a group of cases about um several um gay persons and also um a trans person who came out um to their employers and were fired explicitly for that reason um so the case that's being brought before the court is um that um is them suing because of that but the administration and the justice department um is just flying in the face of what the previous uh positions were um, under the last administration and saying not only is that legal but any gender based discrimination is fine so I mean this wouldn't just affect um, LGBT people but 
everybody. Um, and, you know, just they can just fire you for whatever freaking reason they want. Um, and that extends to not just, you know, your employment. That opens up the door for a whole yeah. lot of discrimination um, everywhere yeah. about everything. Because, I mean, if you have that precedent, then, okay, well, why can't you discriminate uh, if you are an insurance company? It's I, a slippery slope. If you have a job and you come out and you're trans, even if you have great insurance, well, you know what, guess what? They can fire you, and then now you have no insurance. Um, so, I mean, there's... That is something to be aware of. That's something to um, keep following. Um, and that's something I'm I think maybe we might talk about a little bit more when we get closer to that, but, um, I mean, also, I mean, we've talked about the fact that, you know, when a vote, um, that there is the election going on, um, and, I mean, thankfully for the first time, they're actually... The campaign. The campaign. The, the election el- isn't the el- going on. Fine. The campaign it, it's, is... It's, it's an important distinction. The election yeah, isn't enough. that long feels like it anyway um (laughs) but so there actually are um because you know we're allowed to have primaries on the democratic side um there Mm. are actually um a couple of forums and town halls that people are actually bothering to talk about lgbtqia plus issues um which is, I mean, for me personally, personally, they I finally find figured out that there's a voting block <laughs> here. <laughs> um, except for Bernie. I don't know where Bernie went. Um, but, um, so they, Glad did one, um, last week and they had a forum that, um, some of the candidates went to, to talk explicitly about LGBT issues. Um, which is on the YouTube channel. I guess we can link that in the show notes. Um, and there's going to be a town hall on CNN um, in the beginning of October as well. Um, and that, so, one's just, that one on CNN is specifically about LGBT. Yep. And it's, it's, it's astonishing. I mean, it's been astonishing for me just listening to the candidates bring up LGBT issues in d- debates, in their campaign speeches, in their campaign announcements, um, because it's something that was just not even like a thing to talk about, it wasn't of really any import in the last election. And well, I mean, Trump's an asshole, so I mean, he made it more of an issue. Um, but it is interesting to see that the ca- some of the candidates are um, still quite out of touch. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate. You know. Um, but there are some good ones out there, so you should listen up. Mm-hmm. Listen pay, up. Make a decision. Um, and the other part of this, you know, okay, politics aside, there are some places... If you seek them out, probably more outside of our area because we live in a vast wasteland. (laughs) However, a vast LGBT wasteland. Um, But in cities and stuff like that, there are places that transgender and LGBT friendly health care is available. Yeah, I mean, we've talked before about, um, I have gone to the Mazzoni Center. It's your problem. What? If she pukes, it's your problem. Well, okay. Um, <sighs> just leave that in there with no context whatsoever. <laughs> like, what is going on? Um, but, so, I mean, we've talked before about how I go to the Mazzoni Center. Um, and... Mazzoni Center is awesome. And, um, they are a specific... They specifically cater to um, LGBT um, healthcare, um, and and Rutgers also has a and R- Rutgers has um, a transgender um, healthcare center, which through um, both RWJ Barnabas and yes. UMDNJ. Mm-hmm. 
Um, they exist. It exists. But, um, and Rutgers, I'm not so sure about altogether as far as if they have any option like this, but I know, definitely know Mazzoni Center actually functions on a sliding scale. Yes. So if Rutgers you, probably not. If you, yeah, I'm probably not. But if you don't have insurance, if you are having a lot of trouble with your finances, they will work with you and make sure that you get the health care that you need, um, regardless of your ability to pay. Um, and there's places like that which is amazing all across in, the country. Yeah, which is amazing and really important because, as we were discussing on another uh, episode, um, trans people often have a uh, underemployment yes. issue because of discrimination because people are terrible. Um, which I just want to call Patricia Arquette pointing that out on the Emmys the other night. Yeah, right? Where she was like, <laughs> give, give trans people jobs, please. Yeah, um, right? Which, thank you. Um, but, I mean, besides just, you know, places that specifically cater to um, LGBT care and trans care, also take a look at your local hospitals and medical centers because there are ratings that you can look up to see mm -hmm. whether they are... LGBT friendly, what kind of care they provide. Um, like, for example, like we um, use Atlanta Care here in New Jersey. Um, and one of the reasons that we actually switched over um, to them for our primary care and everything else is um, because we saw that they had an LGBT friendly rating and they advertised it very smartly. They did. Um, and so I think it made us feel more comfortable. Absolutely. And and I have to say, every interaction that I've had with people there, they're like, okay. Very respectful. Very, you know. Um, it's fun because, I mean, they have a standard list of questions whenever uh, I go to the doctor. Um, and they're like, okay, I see an F next to your name. So you're a woman. Okay. When was your last cycle? I was like, never. And they just go, okay. And they just move on. <laughs> they're like, right, gotcha. Okay. And they don't question it. Um but and you can tell the difference between an LGBT aware institution and one that is not. Uh -huh. I called for an appointment at the, this orthopedist that I went to, and they're a, a group. I mean, they have several practices, and uh, they asked, you know, all of the normal intake questions: Was I married? Blah 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 blah. Was the insurance under? my name or my husband's mm -hmm. they didn't ask for spouse they asked they assumed that i had a husband and that is because they're not aware they haven't put those policies in practice you to tell me that part. that's fun to uh be more inclusive in that way wow so but you can tell oh you little, can tell oh little lady you got your insurance for your husband Mm. Wait, really? Okay, mm -hmm. that's cute. Or, um, you know, when we went to the hospital, mm -hmm. um, and I said, um, that I was your wife, they just moved on. Yep. Um, although, to be fair, like, in both places, they were kind of like, and who are you? I was like, it's my wife. I, I love the guy. I love the guy at Atlantic Care. Oh, I love the guy at the urgent care place. He asked if 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 I was there with my mother. I mean, I know I look sick, but Jesus Christ, man! Well, it's all that your was gray hair. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, there's that. Um, <laughs> but usually my gray hair looks cute. But he said no, no, and then he said no, no. You don't look old. It's just that she looks very young, and I'm like, I love you, because especially because I'm the older one here. I mean that was that was a decent save on his part, but screw you, dude. Um, <laughs> but um, you know one one thing, and we mentioned this a, a couple minutes ago. Um, if you, um, especially if you're looking for um, HRT, and you're in a situation where um, your insurance doesn't cover it, um, you are in a state that um, 
is not LGBT friendly. If you need health care, go to Planned Parenthood. Um, that's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. It's not, you know, a, a chop shop that, that, that just does abortions. That's not what happens there. Um, and um, despite what the, the rhetoric um, of people who um, are against or are against Planned Parenthood would have you believe, um, that's not um, their primary mission. Um, they do a whole lot more. And um, my friend in South Carolina, that's where she goes to get her to get her um, hormones is is actually um, at Planned Parenthood. And that's probably where she's going to go to get her mammogram when it's time. Probably. Um, it's more I'm going to go. We'll see. Um, but so, I mean, that's something else to be aware of that that is a resource that um, is available. And if you and are it's also need, available just for education purposes too. yes 100 percent um so if you are in need go there learn some stuff get some help and you know what it doesn't hurt if you're not sure what people's standards are if you can't find their lgbt rating and stuff like that open your mouth and ask them mm-hmm there's nothing that says you can't call a doctor's office and say, I want to know what your views, what your stance on LGBT patients is, on LGBT care. Well, you can come right out and ask them. And when you sign up for your insurance in November, open enrollment starts in November. When you sign up for your insurance for the new year, ask those questions. And I think this year we're going to be being a little more discerning as far as... As much as our wallets will allow. Yeah, as much which as our is wallets the problem. will allow. Yeah. Um, just so that we can, you know, have some more options as far as, as, far as our care. I mean, not just with me, but for you as well. Yeah, because I have a pre-existing condition where apparently I have to go to physical therapy forever. Forever. For ever so yeah and I hate it I'm sorry hate physical therapy I hate it um so okay yeah. so I'm sorry your shoulder hurts mm. I'll give you kisses yeah well if my kid didn't weigh 30 pounds yeah a giant two year old Harumph. who still wants cuddles She's gonna be like that when she's like forty. It's like, ah, get a job, kid. If she's forty and she still wants cuddles, I will still give her cuddles, but I'm not picking her up. <laughs> oh, that would just be weird. Anyway, right? So, speaking of which, we have to go get her from daycare. Yes. Okay. So, I think we're just going to end things there. Okay. That sounds like a good place so, uh, to end things. Yeah. So, I am Rachel. And I am Shannon. And thank you for listening. And uh, take care of yourselves. And uh, good health. Yeah. Good health. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, good thanks. One. I, I try. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you again for listening to Our Life in Transition. This show is hosted by Rachel and Shannon McDill. Our producer and editor is Shannon McDill. Theme music is Seize the Day by Jens Kilsoft. Check him out at jens.kilsoft.net. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash olitpod. That's forward slash O-L-I-T-P-O-D. Your support makes this show possible. Thank you.